Hey everyone, Jexie here. Welcome back to another video. So I've been getting a lot of positive feedback on the story times I've been doing, so I thought I'd share another story with you. I thought I'd share with you the time that child services and the police got involved when my ex-mother-in-law told them that I was using heroin, when I actually had almost five years clean. So before I get into the specifics of the story, I do need to give you like a little bit of background information. There's a lot to go into, but I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, perhaps I'll share that in another video. But in September of 2017, my kids and I left my marital home and my marriage. I brought them up to New Jersey, which is where my family and my, and my ex-husband's family both live. And we had gone through some court stuff and, you know, it was kind of a mess. But we went from, originally I was living with my in-laws when I moved up. They had a bigger house. They had rooms for myself and my two kids. They allowed me to bring up my dog. And I thought the school districts was better than where my parents lived. My parents lived in a townhouse and they weren't in a place where they were comfortable taking animals. They had just had all their, you know, got new furniture and carpets redone and they didn't want to bring in a cat and a dog and which I understood. So that's why I was at my in-laws house as opposed to my parents' house. So I had only been living there for probably, let's see, it would have been about six weeks when this happened. Um, when my when my husband at the time, my, my ex-husband, I never know what to call my ex-husband, um, he would have the opportunity to visit with the kids. And when he was able to visit with the kids, I would leave the kids at my in-laws where I was living, and I would go visit my parents for the weekend, allowing him to visit the kids at his mother's house. Um, he wasn't living there. He would come up at the time. He was still living in Maryland, and he would come up. So it was a weekend in October, at the beginning of October, and he had come up to visit the kids. And I went to my parents' house for the weekend. Apparently, while he was there, he had given a box of Narcan to my mother-in-law and made a snarky comment about how she should keep it in the house because she may need it for me. Now, mind you, at this time, I was going to be celebrating five years that November. So I had had significant time in recovery and hadn't had any <laughs> issues in that area. But And, and he had. He was dealing with recovery-related issues. So... Anyway, the following weekend, the kids and I came to visit my parents. Uh, I think it was a Jewish holiday, maybe. I'm not really sure. There was some reason that we were down here for the weekend, and it was Saturday night. And again, this was the week after they visited with their father. And at 11.30 at night, I get a knock on the door. 11.30 at night, I get a knock on the door from child services. Now, of course, the kids are sleeping. I answer the door, and they they say, you know, they announce who they are, if they can come in, okay, I let them in. And they tell me that they are there because my mother-in-law reported to the police that they had found heroin in my belongings. Now, you can imagine my shock, and I was upset. I couldn't understand how heroin had made its way into my belongings. Heroin was not my drug of choice, and I had never actually had heroin in my stuff. So it's not like it could have been from an old time before. Um, so I was really concerned. And my first thought went to the fact that my kid's father at the time was going through a lot of issues, um, both addiction related, mental health related. He had trauma and brain injuries. So he wasn't always thinking clearly. And my first thought was the fact that he must have planted it. He must have planted it as a way to, you know, try to get the kids to make me look bad. I wasn't sure. So my concern immediately came, one, if he planted heroin on my stuff, where else may he have planted it? Perhaps in my kids' stuff? Perhaps in their book bags? And I was absolutely panicked. So of course I made that the decision right there that I could not bring my kids back into a house that potentially had heroin in it. So I knew I could, no, I could not go back to my in-law's house. Um, I'm not going to expose my children to heroin. Um, so they asked me, you know, of course, they said it was in my belongings, so they assume it's mine. And I said, well, I, I have almost five years clean off of all substances, like I don't even drink. And they said, well, I could come on Tuesday because it was a holiday weekend or something. And they said they, they weren't going to be open till Tuesday, and I could come on Tuesday to take a drug test. Well, I told them that was ridiculous because it was Saturday, and a lot of drugs can be out of your system by Tuesday. And I didn't want that 
to come up later, like while it was days after, who knows, right? So I went to the hospital immediately when they left and I went and got a drug test. So they told me that they were, you know, the emergency child services people and they were going to have to send a real caseworker out the following day to talk to my children, which I was annoyed about because this is now the second time since I had left my marriage six weeks before the child services was involved. The first time they were involved was because of the restraining order that I had filed against my ex. And because of the domestic violence type situations that were mentioned in the restraining order, they had to just check and make sure the children were okay. So I was totally okay with that. It was like a quick thing. They closed the case. Everything was fine. But this time now they're in for different reasons. And I, not to, you know, crap on child services, but although I have seen them do some good, for the most part, I've seen them. They seem to cause trouble for people who don't need them involved and ignore the cases where they really should be involved. So I don't have real pleasant feelings about them anyway. However, they have been very helpful to me during my transition from, you know, being in my marriage to not. And they did get, provide me a lot of resources. They were very supportive of me in court and all that other stuff. So I didn't, at this point, I didn't have like a really bad, you know, trust with them. And and I, they had a lot of information on the the situation. So anyway, so they were going to come to my house on Sunday. And Sunday morning, I read an email from my mother-in-law and it says, you have until 12 p.m. today to drop the kids off at our house and go get yourself some help. We will take responsibility of your children until you can get your shit back together. I mean, they didn't use those words, but you know what I'm saying. Um, And I, I definitely, like, I was like, what? Like, you've got to be out of your mind. I didn't even, I don't even think I responded. I, I would put the emails up, but it's, it's probably not that important. But then I noticed on one of the emails, my mother-in-law described what she had found in my belongings. And it occurred to me at that moment that what she found was not heroin. <laughs> so I immediately tell my dad and I said, dad, we got to go down to the police station and I have to clarify what this is that she turned in because I don't want it on record that potentially I'm using heroin that's ridiculous so we drove down to the police station and apparently she tried to when when my mother-in-law had went to the police station Saturday night and had brought in what she thought was heroin the she wanted the police to test it and she wanted me arrested and they said we can't do either of those things because you can't just bring in drugs and have us test them. It doesn't work that way. And she's like, well, isn't this a crime? And they had told her really the only people who had committed a crime, if it was heroin, was her for transporting it because she was taking it. She, and they also told her that she didn't really have a right to go through my belongings without probable cause. Even though it was her house, I was staying in her house. What she found, just to give you an idea, I was staying in, a, in a, the guest room in her house. I had a book bag in the closet in the room that was mine. So she went into the room after she said that she that would be my space. She went into the closet and then dug through my book bag for who knows what reason. So I get to the police station and I tell them who I am and I tell them that, you know, and I want to let them know what the items are. And I am going to show pictures of these items. Um, the first thing she turned in, she turned in a couple of things, but the one of the things she turned in was headache powder. They come in little white wax packaging, but they were in a box. So it wasn't like it was just like random. You, I'll show you the packaging and I'll show you the box. Like I'll put that stuff up. But so I can understand if you found it without context, you'd be like, what is this? Right. But had she just asked me, <laughs> I could have showed her. So I brought the box down. You know, I had boxes of them. It's just like Tylenol. So I brought the box with the packets. I said, is this what you have? And they're like, oh yes, that's what it is. The other thing she turned in was in a cigarette cellophane wrapper. Uh, when we lived in Maryland down at the Chesapeake Bay, there's fossils on the bay. There's shark's teeth. It's like what that area is known for is to find shark's teeth. That People would drive from for hours to come to the bay to find shark's teeth. So they're very easy to find. I had, I had them everywhere, but like I had a little cigarette cellophane because I ran out of a container I guess probably for the day and they had shark's teeth in them so they showed me they said well what about the black stuff and I was like what black stuff are you talking about because I had only recognized the headache powder when she had described in her email what she had found 
So they showed me the black stuff they found, and I started laughing so hard. I was like, those are teeth. Those are fossilized shark's teeth. Like, I don't know how they thought that was, like, black tar heroin or something. I don't even know what black tar heroin looks like. But they were shark's teeth. Again, I'll show you pictures. And they're tiny. You know, like, they're not, they're not big. They're, they're super tiny, but they're still clearly teeth. So they went back, and I guess they looked up to, like, verify my story about where things are. And I, and I have the police reports that show that they did that. But, yeah, so they actually gave me back my belongings. They, they said some of the powder had fallen out of the heading powder. If it was okay, if they threw it out, I said sure. Um, and they gave me back the other stuff that she had turned in with apologies to me. They told me that they were going to call her and let her know that what they had found was not, what she had found was not heroin. But, so mind you, I was there with them at 10 a.m. I then had to deal with child services, and luckily at this point I had a police report and stuff that showed, well, I don't think I had the police report yet, I think I had to wait a few days for it, but by the time I had to see child services for my Tuesday appointment, I had the police report, I had all this stuff, and, um, and what's crazy, let me just add this, even though I had a police report that showed that everything was a mistake, that these were false claims, that this was completely unvalid, they still had to go through their entire process. Instead of just dropping it, they still wanted to interview my kids. And, do, and I let them speak to my kids on that Sunday. Because at this point, as I said, child services had been pretty supportive of, of me with my children. And I wanted to like keep things as they were because I anticipated that there may be future problems with my ex and I would rather have child services on my side in case of future bad claim. So I allowed them to speak to my children and you know I was there, I supervised, they got to see the room, whatever, it was fine. So because at this point although I knew it was false claims, they understood it was most likely false claims, there was nothing documented that said they were. So on Tuesday then, when I go into the child services office, I also offer to take another drug test, which so I have now passed two drug tests. I have the police report that says that everything was false and it was all a mistake. And they still, like for like a week or two, like wanted to meet with my kids again. At that point, I told them to F off because I was like, there's no reason for it. You shouldn't have had a case. I can't believe that I can call and make a fake claim because at the Keep in mind, when they got involved, they hadn't spoken to the police. They had only spoken to my mother-in-law. So all the information they had was from my mother-in-law and from no other sources. I provided them with the information from the police. I provided them with drugs. Like, I provided them with all that stuff. All they had was a phone call and a claim. So it blew my mind that even though I'm showing them evidence upon evidence from law enforcement, as well as other areas, that the claims that were made were false, they still felt like they had the right to continue with their full procedures. I said, wait a minute, so you're telling me that I could call child services on any random person and say, I know that this person's using drugs and then you can get involved in that way? And I'm like, that seems really, un like, just not right. How can any person call and make those kind of awful claims without any evidence for another person? And then even once that evidence is shown to be like incorrect, like not valid, you still think you have a right to be invasive in their lives? Like I had told them flat out, I said, I have been more than supportive with you. I have, this is now the second time you guys have un, have gotten involved in my parenting when there was no need for it. And I'm done. I was like, I'm not doing it. You're not speaking to my kids again. You're not putting them through trauma. I said, I'm their mother. It is my responsibility to protect my children. And the questions that they were asking had nothing to do with anything. They were asking things like, did daddy ever touch you in an inappropriate place? Like, that wasn't even being claimed by anybody. So why is it that my children are having to go through these awful sets of questioning for nothing? So I was a bit annoyed, and needless to say, I was ridiculously annoyed at my in-laws because I was like, how could you do this to my children? They saw what happened the first time child services got involved just because of the courts. And we all agreed that it was traumatic for them. Why would we ever put them through that again? Knowing that, I just want to say that, like, look, I understand. I have a history, right? I'm a recovering drug addict, and that is going to follow me until the day I die. She doesn't know what's going on. I just went through trauma, and who knows what my ex was telling her, right? I don't know. 
if she just would have asked me, I wouldn't even taken a drug test for her. But she went to the police and then called child services instead of ever asking me. So needless to say, the police had said that they were going to let her know that it was incorrect. <laughs> well, they didn't let her know until six o'clock on Sunday night. So I had dealt with the police in the morning. I had dealt with child services in the afternoon, obviously ignored her emails. And then I got multiple emails from her saying how clearly I didn't care about my kids, that they would be taking me to court. They were going to file for custody and have my kids taken from me. And that how dare I, you know, not put them first and what a terrible mother I am. <laughs> they have no idea when they're writing all this stuff that they turned in headache powder and shark seats to the police and are making all these claims against me. So you can imagine, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall when they got the call from the police at six o'clock that said, mm, you're wrong. So I did get an email back and they realized then that they'd blown it. I clearly am not moving back into a home where you're A, going through my belongings and B, have the audacity to make some type of claim like that against me without even speaking to me about it. So that set us up for weeks of some tough times with the kids. Mind you, this my kids had just, the, they started school in Maryland one day in September when I decided that we had to leave and we had to leave now. They then went to school at my while we were living at my in-laws for just a couple of weeks. They had just gotten settled into these new schools. And now they were going to have to do school number three because we couldn't go back there. I mean, the trauma that these kids had gone through now, I will say this to end on a, on a happy note. Things are fine, uh, at least in that regard. My ex-mother-in-law and I have a very, very good relationship today. She has more than apologized. You know, it was a really tough time, and nobody wants to think that their son is as sick as my ex-husband really is. And so it was easier for her to think that I played some sort of role in, the, in like our marriage dissolving, in the, in the trauma, in the hurt, that I had exaggerated things. It was easier for her to believe that than to really think that her son was as sick as he was, right? So there's no hard feelings. I was I was not happy about it then, but I've learned in recovery that we forgive, right? That we try to be empathetic and understand where somebody's coming from and not hold things against people like that. She really thought she was doing the right thing, as crazy as it sounds. She really didn't think she had another option. She tried to look out for my children, and she thought she was doing the right thing. So I say that to show that really reco recovery for me is, is so much about, you know, we say about learning a new way of life. If I wasn't in recovery, I'm not sure I would have been able to forgive her. I could have held my kids over her head. You know, all she wanted was a relationship with them, and I could cut that off at any time. But I don't. My kids took some time to forgive her, and that was not because of anything I said. That was just based on their own experiences. But when they saw me being forgiving, they were able to be forgiving. And now they have a good relationship with her, and, and you know, she recognizes the fact that her son's sick, and the relationship with my children doesn't have to have anything to do with her son. He's not in the picture so much, and he doesn't have to be for her to have a relationship. So, look, there's nothing that says what tomorrow is going to hold or how our relationship will pan out to the future, but... There's something incredible about the power of forgiveness by simply forgiving somebody and being willing to move on. Everybody is happier today. You know, like I, I'm grateful. She helps out with my kids a ton. You know, like as you guys know, my kids are in sleepaway camp and she really helped them get a lot of the stuff that they need for camp. You know, they're growing. I'm a single mom. Like I don't make a lot of money. And, you know, thank goodness that they're willing to help with my kids and they're very supportive of me being a single parent and you know, so today things are good, but I will tell you, <laughs> you don't ever want to get a knock on your door at 1130 on a Saturday night claiming that you had heroin in your belongings. You never even used heroin. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little story. Uh, I hope it wasn't too confusing. I didn't want to give way too many details and make it personal and drag up old things in case, you know, she watches or other people watch. I don't want people to think she's a terrible person. Uh, but I wanted to give you guys enough that you understood, like, what I went through. Have you ever been accused of using when you actually haven't? Uh, how did you handle it? I'd love to hear your experiences and your stories. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like me to talk about, um, any other stories you'd like to hear. 
Thank you guys so much for all your support. I hope you have a great weekend, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye, guys.